Hello, this is Brett from Survival Cops, and welcome to part three of Mobile Radio Installation DC Power Sources, where we're going to discuss the permanent or hard install. Now, when we talk about a permanent or a hard install, what we're going to do is, is we're actually going to permanently mount the equipment in the vehicle. It's something to where you're actually physically making connection with the vehicle electrical system, generally at the start battery and you're running cabling and everything throughout the vehicle and not just having it as a temporary like in our soft install where we just plugged into a cigarette lighter and basically threw it on the seat. Well let's get cracking and on to the subject matter. The first example we're going to study is the constant power example which is basically hooking the equipment directly to battery positive and directly to ground. The pros of it are it's simple and that your equipment will work independent of the vehicle running. If the vehicle's deadline, but there's still battery voltage present, your radio equipment will function and you will be able to operate whatever electrical equipment or radio equipment you have attached to the battery in this fashion. And there's less voltage drop. Now the cons are, is there's no way to open the circuit easily. In order to open the circuit to reset equipment that may have had like, it's in a headlock because it's in some kind of a fail state, it happens. Uh, you end up having to get underneath the hood and disconnect the battery, pull the fuse, or to pull the power connector from the equipment to reset it. Uh, there is battery draw with a vehicle sitting. Even though that radio is turned off, a lot of times certain radios will actually keep the uh, PA, or the power amplifier deck, in the radio live. And while it's sitting there, it is drawing a certain amount of equipment. Now, in a 24-hour period, that's not really a huge consideration. However, when that vehicle's sitting there for a couple weeks in an airport parking lot, you can bet that you're going to have a problem and your vehicle may be deadlined when you return to it. And also, equipment is subjected to voltage fluctuations when starting. Now, whenever you start your vehicle, your battery voltage does drop below 12 volts, and this can cause the equipment to be subjected to these fluctuations in voltage, and over time, this can cause damage to the equipment. One of the ways around this is, is to obtain an item called a start guard. Now, a start guard, they're not inexpensive, but they're not overly expensive either. And what generally those are, they're rated for like 20 amps of draw, and it's basically like a little... UPS. This model I've built here represents an automobile. This is your firewall right here and your cables are passing through it. This represents your battery which is your source. Here's a fuse for protection and your battery positive and negative lead lead to this voltmeter which represents our load. For a single item this isn't that bad of an idea. But the problem is, is when you start to add items to your vehicle, vessel, or whatever, and you end up with a stack of wires and fuse holders on your battery positive terminal. Another item of note is, is there's really no need to bring your ground lead into your engine compartment. Because your entire vehicle chassis is at the same potential as your ground terminal on your battery, if bonded correctly. The first improvement we made to our model electrical system here is to add a ground bus. Now you can see that I've just taken the ground lead or a larger size conductor ground and brought it into the passenger compartment and attached it to the bus bar and then I will take all the equipment that I plan on installing and tying it to this central ground bus here. Now remember that your vehicle itself is generally bonded to your negative terminal of your battery bringing the entire all the metallic parts of the vehicle chassis to ground potential so if this is just a simple installation just by making a proper ground connection to a metal portion in the passenger compartment you can eliminate the ground bus altogether if you only anticipate installing one piece of equipment but by using this bus bar what you've done is, is you've allowed yourself to plan for future installations now in this example here you can see how we've built this system with the thoughts of future expansion in mind. What we're going to say we've done is we've changed all the wire gauge to support the sum of all anticipated loads. We've replaced the fuse holder with the master circuit breaker. We're using our ground bus and we've added a 10 gang fuse panel here. Now. The sum of all circuits in this panel, this panel is rated for 100 amps maximum, and each circuit in this panel 
is for a 30 amp circuit is what it's rated. So as you can see in this system right here, we've got enough room to expand and add additional equipment and can make all of those connections for that additional equipment inside of the passenger compartment with relatively simple connections. Okay, now we're briefly going to talk about hard install switch power. Now, switch power, for the purposes of this video, is defined as using ignition sensor or a remote switch and relay to control your battery positive. Now, the pros of this are it gives you positive battery positive control. You flip a switch and it kills all of your accessory circuits. This is good for troubleshooting purposes. It's good for safety. It's good to eliminate parasitic accessory discharge meaning that accessories that draw power even when they're turned off at their control but yet still hook the battery in a constant power sense. Now the cons are it's more complicated and it's more expensive to implement and it's not tremendously much more so and we'll discuss that. There is a greater chance of having greater voltage drop in a circuit like this however if you pick components carefully that amount of voltage drop is really inconsequential. Another disadvantage can be that if ignition sense is used, your accessory will be slave to the vehicle being in and on ignition state. This system provides positive control of all of your accessory DC circuits and your accessory DC distribution system with a simple toggle switch. And it allows for you to expand your DC accessories in your vehicle or vessel. Now in this example here, I have this toggle switch here, and this toggle switch controls my interior distribution panel. And then I can go ahead and secure my circuits with the flip of the switch. Now this circuit, as laid out, is designed to provide 80 amps of service. Now for the purposes of being able to assemble the model and keeping it all neat and tight for you guys, I've had to use smaller cable. Now in an actual installation all of your your high current carrying conductors are going to be number four gauge which is this size wire here. Conductors for your accessory from your interior DC distribution panel to your loads should be sized based upon the amount of current draw for each item that you're installing. The fuse chosen for this particular model. This is an 80 amp ANL fuse which is a very efficient fuse. There's very little voltage drop at high current across one of these. The design of the fuse holder allows you to use large cables without putting undue strain on the fuse holder itself. And these two studs would of course be covered by a insulator. The relay I'm using here is a 100 amp continuous duty solenoid. Now when using a master relay type of arrangement, you want to size your master relay to be of 20% more carrying capacity than your total load. This particular example has four terminals, and when you see four terminals, uh, that generally indicates that the ground side of the coil is insulated from the body of the solenoid or relay. Uh, typically the three wire ones, the body of it, when you mount it to the vehicle chassis that usually suffices for a ground for the for the coil. And then this terminal right here provides DC power to the relay that's switched to to power the coil and close the circuit. To power the relay I've installed a 2 amp fuse. The 2 amp fuse is, is fed off of the source side of the master fuse and runs to one pole and the switch. For the benefit of those who may not have seen a setup like this before, we'll go ahead and demonstrate for the test light here. You can see that we have power on our source side of our master fuse. We have power on the load side of our master fuse. We have power on the source side of our master relay. We have no power on the load side of our master relay. We do have power at our feed side of our switch, and we have no power at the switch side of our switch. When we arm our relay, 
you can see that power is delivered from the switch to this side of the coil, energizing the coil, closing the contacts within the relay, and providing power through said relay, which feeds our interior DC distribution panel. Properly installed, the core parts of your system are going to last the service life of the vehicle. And when you go to install an accessory at a later date, it's simply a matter of hooking a number 10 ring terminal and a spade terminal and placing a fuse in here and having an additional circuit added. Now we can switch our relay with the ignition switch if we chose to. And the way we would do that is, is we would go to our interior fuse box and we would find a circuit with our test light that only has power whenever the ignition switch is on and whenever the ignition switch is off there is no power and then we would use a fuse tap like this right here and these are the only way I recommend to tap a fuse panel uh, the little ones that go underneath the fuses uh, those right there are no good but you would take that source of power and you would provide power to your switch side which is the conductor that runs back to your relay so whenever you turn the vehicle on it would also arm this relay and provide power to your accessory circuits another use for that interior fuse panel is using the same fuse tap and finding a constant source of power tapping that fuse and then instead of tying into your master the low the source side of your master fuse tying that in to your conductor here and using your switch to switch it and just providing power to switch your relay off of that fuse block if you're desiring to use a much smaller circuit like let's say that you only had to uh, power a single mobile radio one of these right here will suffice for that this is just a 30 amp relay uh, these are typically used for your horn and for your um, fog lights, etc., etc. And it's the same thing on these right here. On this terminal here, you would put your source of power, and then you'd put your load on this terminal here, on the outside, and then you would have your, your ground and your switched hot to these terminals on the outside, and this would provide power to your accessory panel or whatever accessory you're intending to power off of a switch. This model represents a combination system which has a constant power fuse block and your switch power fuse block. Now your constant power side is fed by a fuse that's fed off of your source side of your master fuse and then provides power to the internal fuse block and this fuse block here is generally used to drive your relay and you also can use this to drive lower current circuits such as a uh, something like a uh, uh, lighter outlet plugs and stuff like that if you wanted to be able to charge a cellular telephone overnight uh, or devices that would require constant power can be charged through this and then you still have your high current devices that you don't need to leave on at all times controlled by your switch. Now something you don't want to forget to put on your high current side is, is always add a couple of these. Get yourself your favorite connector if you use power poles or if you use another form of uh, DC connector. Go ahead and put those on a, a lead of zip cord, like three foot long or so. And then set it up so you can plug it in to a specific fuse on here and a ground giving you these pre-wired accessory cords for high current accessories that you may need to install and operate on the fly. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.